Um, we're going to have a public hearing. Uh, I'm going to do a roll call, please. Mike Plummer? Here. Lisa Alizucci? Here. Bill Henderson? Here. Neil Lyman? Joe Colosimo? Here. Joe Verducci? Bert Cherry? Here. Pat DeBlasio? Here. Tom McDonough? Here. Joe Sykes? Here. Lori Collins? Here. Chad King? Bill Chilio? Here. Dan Miller? This is the note uh, Joe Verducci had a family emergency. Yep. <coughs> um, there is no public comment. Uh, this is the review of proposed ordinance number 998. Uh, uh, review of proposed ordinance number 998 amending the current rates charged for uh, source service within the borough of Bridgeville with uh, Elkis and Nogging County Sanitary Authority. Increase of an additional 51 cents per 1,000 gallons of water usages and a one dollar nine cents per quarterly bill increase of the service charge. And the borough uh, was no increase in 2018. So basically, the LCN rate of, in 2017 was two dollars. I'm sorry, six dollars and ninety-two cents per one thousand gallons, and the 2018 rate will be seven dollars forty-two cents per one thousand gallons. And the borough rate will remain unchanged at six dollars and twenty-three cents per gallon, per one thousand gallons. Uh, giving you a total rate for the 2018 of thirteen dollars and sixty-five cents per one thousand gallons, with the service charge that takes it to fifteen dollars and sixty cents per quarter. Comments? I think it's crazy, huh? I think Joel's comment was. I think it's not. Is there any accountability for this stuff, or is this forced government stuff? Forced. Yes, we have no say in what office. So, I mean, as a citizen, I can't go down and help the Sam and say, "I want to your books." Yeah, yeah you can. Yeah. I can. Yeah, they're an authority, and they pass their rates. Actually, what we do is we buy from <coughs> and pay at a wholesale rate. Right. From. Uh, it's just, it's just a basket. We're just passing through there. So, what is, I mean, I, I know I'm out of order or whatever, but what, is this, what does that cover? Does that cover, like, maintenance and everything on, on the lines? And, uh, that just cover water? It's not water. Yeah. It's maintenance Treatment. and replacement right. of sanitary sewer lines under the sanitary right. like, federal consent order. So, they have so how long is it going to go on? Forever and ever? Is it going to go up there every year? Or what are we going to do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, their 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 rep said that they were planning on doing that kind of rate increase each year, right? Yeah, yeah. they give a three-year rate increase mm -hmm. um, every three <clears throat> years. It's it, this was actually less than last year. Seventeen. It was seventeen percent last year. Went down to uh, like seven and a half percent this year. What we can control is the. Six dollars and what, twenty-three cents per thousand gallons. The bridge was closed, right. and we we control where that goes. We control what projects we're doing. We control you know, a large amount of money. That, that, what is that? Uh, what's the total sewage budget? Eight thousand. It's a million. A million. About a million. Seven. Right. So there's a million dollars that our residents are paying that we're using to fix and work on source. And um, okay. a lot of that is the yeah, Alcatan. That's uh, that's true. That's true. So right. ours is right. what about so it's like eight hundred thousand dollars is Alcasan, so three or four hundred thousand is us. You're right. I'm, I'm, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I was getting myself a little lost there. But that portion, you know, that portion we do control. And I come back to the inflow and infiltration and those sites. Uh, you want, I, I, I mentioned this at the budget meeting. So we should see what our projects are doing to reduce inflow and infiltration. Um, 
I remember the, I remember the day four, four years ago when there was a large, you know, rainstorm. And I remember standing on Baldwin Street and the public works people pulled the manhole off and the water was, you know, you know uh, maybe a half a foot from the top of the manhole as it's backing up into the houses on Baldwin Street. And I remember Councilman Petrichelli. Do you remember what you said that day when you looked I at the said, water? This water is so clean here you can drink it. Yes. The water is so clean you, you can drink it. You couldn't be that they say that. Now I don't none of us drank it. Of but it was that clean. And Joe, you, you know, what what is the uh, what is the difference between dry weather flow and wet weather flow <clears throat> approximately? What, what it's, it's probably, the dry weather flow is probably less than a quarter. Right. You know. So we're treating rainwater. We're treating rainwater. And Alcasan's got the same problem. They're getting rainwater from us. So, you know, where is the inflow and infiltration coming from? The engineer has said repeatedly that you have almost as much sewer line going in your laterals, that, that's the, the pipe that connects your house to the main sewer line, as you have mains, as you have sewer line. Okay. We, have, we have not addressed the source of the leaks. If, you're, if your incoming water was leaking and you had a geyser in your front yard, you'd call the water company and say fix it, right? This is a reverse of that. We have water leaking into our sewer system, so much so that it's over, it's, it's, it, it can't carry the capacity, and yet it doesn't get fixed. Joe, what, what programs do we have lined up for 2018 that are going to reduce the inflow and infiltration, and how much is going to be reduced? I think Pat, one thing that has to be addressed is the laterals and the ownership of those laterals, and that's always been a gray area as to who owns them. We've always taken the position that the laterals are the ownership of the property owner. Yeah, it's so not gray. Yeah, it's, okay. yeah, yeah okay. it's not gray. It's not, okay. It's, okay, it's not gray, but still, my point being, you know, we've always had the position that uh, the property owner being responsible for the ladder who remains in their house uh, is the one that has to take care of it. So, you know, I think first and foremost, we have to have some kind of mechanism be, be it an ordinance or a policy established that you know we're going to be looking at these laterals and we're going to put the or do we want to put the burden of the lateral repair placement on the property owner? And the question is at what time do you want to put that burden on? Do you want to take a, a blanket approach and maybe divide the burrow up into some, you know, let's say ten sections and say these ten sections of the burrow have to have their laterals tested and replaced? Or do you want to make it a burden that's something that's happened at the time of the sale of a home and put that responsibility, God forbid, on the estate of somebody who's trying to sell their mother's home after she's died? So I think, that, I think that's the first thing that has to be. If you talk about the sand, that's what they're telling us. That's, I, right. I talked right. to Tim Prevo last month, right? And he said he need to start looking at a program mm -hmm. that within 25 years. You know, so you have, you know, we have a quick time stamp on it mm -hmm. that these laterals will be taken care of. You know, whether it's for the sale of the house, you know, we all talk about it, it is expensive. It could be thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you know that it's going to be, you know, for the next 15 years or whatever, 20 years, you're not being surprised by it. I, I'd give you a third option that, you know, it can be done prior to, to either a do on sale or, or, or a, a do now. And that is simply identifying it. And I firmly believe, Joe, that there are some leaks in our, in our, in our uh, what do they call your arterial lines? Arterial lines? The laterals. No, not the laterals. The, the ones that aren't the intercept of it, the collectors. I mean, you, know, you look at that much water going into those collectors and, and the speed at which it gets there, there's got to be some sort of a leak in, under, underneath the uh, McLaughlin run. Well, you know, maybe it's a matter of power, so it could be something we need to go back and re 
die test some of these homes because you know we went through a program where we die tested roof drapes here. And maybe we need to revisit that and possibly, possibly uh, see where people may have went back and tied up their roof drain back to the sanitary sewer, you know, after, after the fact. It happens. I'm certain that it happens, but I really don't believe that that is the, the, you know, the main source. In fact, I'm going to suggest that we've, we've die tested some of these homes so many times, and... Uh, and and other homes have never been tested because they've never been, well they've been tested because we've died we've die tested the whole community. We die tested even homes that haven't been sold. So we've die tested our community and we've die tested homes that have been sold and homes that have been sold multiple times. We've die tested multiple times. I think that fruit that has been picked. I don't think we're going to get any more out of die testing. What we need now is lateral cameraing and we need a lateral cameraing along with our mainline cameraing to identify <coughs> where, the, where the flow is coming from. And if that flow is coming from a roof drain, well it's going to be just as obvious if you do the, if you do the lateral testing when it's, in, you know, when it's not dry weather. And that was the suggestion that some people have made. Instead of trying to do your cameraing, you know, during dry weather, do it when it's got a got some flow in the line, some precipitation, and you know, see that's the the flow isolation studies, which I didn't didn't we do some? Yeah, we did, a flow, we did a flow. What did we find? Well, we we created a a baseline for, for going back and looking at these areas, and after we do a demonstration project to see what the flow is happening. So, so we've we've got a baseline. We've got a baseline. On on which uh, where did we, what 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 actual source did we did we do isolation? I have to show it to you, Pat. Okay, that'd be good. I'll have that information with me. Joe, we also did line line the a lot of the sanitary lines down on on Baldwin Street over the last couple we've of years done, too. We've done work on that system. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we, we as the borough have done our lines. Right. I mean, that's the mandate that we're under to, to go through and do all that. So right. I mean, it's not like. Nothing's getting done. Yeah, it's not like nothing's getting done, Bruce. We are working on, we've, we've taken all of the videotape inspection work that we've had. We've looked at the level fours and level five defects where there's, you know, structural problems. We've made the repairs to those lines and got that taken care of. So it's not like nothing's being done. You're right. And, and I know the Baldwin Street because those sores are at creek level. Yes. I know what we deal with at the garage. Well, you know, the other one thing that we've done and, and is on, on, uh, Baldwin Street is we, we, we there about two years ago we did an extensive cleaning of that main line and interceptor because there was a build up of sediment in which there was a loss of capacity. I know that has nothing to do with infiltration, right? But it was still a maintenance function that had to be performed. And we did that all the way from our line, yes, Don McLaughlin, all, all the way down to Chartier's Creek, right? The back flow. And there's also Gateway yeah, just provided. I'll leave it in your office as a 2017 source reduction study report. So there's a lot of information in here also with the studies that have been done. And for council's information, you are going to see the lateral testing in the next phase of, the, yeah. of this coming up. And like you said, Bruce, the O and it continues under the ACO and generally. And after, with regard to lateral testing, you're actually starting to see in the private sector whether or not there's an ordinance or not. Folks are starting to put in their REMAX agreements now. So, then we're going to wait for the law to catch up. Mm -hmm. Do we have, I mean, we've got time, so I might as well ask questions, right? Um, to, to what, are, what are the plans for 2018 for Bridgeville? Do you have them sort of lined up? I don't have them lined up yet, Pat. Yeah. Okay. It, it would be good to, to see what we're planning on doing. I know, I'm pretty sure you're planning on making some dirty movies, right? Yes. Those are the, so that everybody is clear on that, those are the cameras going through the sewer lines, not other kinds of dirty movies. <laughs> Otherwise known as CCTV, right, Jeff? Joe, you also, we do the demonstration project with God submitted to Yes, we submitted that. Can you remind us what that is? 
which is, you know, we had, we've done some flow isolation work and we came up with some uh, ideas to different parts of the borough, whether we do lining, uh, but to identify those areas where we could maybe get some eye and eye out and uh, demonstrate that there's a reduction in the uh, flow by doing a liner, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're right, Pat. Right? We got to get it. We, yeah, but moving forward, we have to we have to look at that right. as far as the item at hand. Oh no, there's nothing. It, <laughs> all of all of that flows literally from the six dollars and twenty three cents per thousand gallons. I know that that's you know that's why I use the the moment. I agree. Thank you, Thank you time. I have no further comments. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Motion to adjourn. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.